Hey y'all, it's Pam with 44 Marketplace and Creative Finishes by Pam. It's 8 o'clock on Monday night and you know where I like to be on Monday nights on the Dixie Bell page. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to chit chat about this cute little thrift store find that I, I made last week. Um, I couldn't believe it when I stumbled across it because I've been wanting to do one with the library pools and this one was missing pretty much two-thirds of the hardware. But it's one of those that you might have looked over because it was missing the hardware. Um, the top was all messed up. I'm going to drop it down a little bit and show you guys. You guys know I love my little cart, my hydraulic lift cart. It's fantastic. So the first thing I did when I got it was, of course, cleaned it. And then I decided I wanted to sand the top off. Now, you guys know I use my surf prep sander. And I usually start with a... Um, you know, about 150 grain, something like that, and take it off. And I'm not going to stain this top. That's why I didn't go ahead and take all of this off. I just needed a nice even top. And my surf prep took it off in, in minutes, in mere minutes. Um, but the top was all kind of uh, cracked and breaking and things like that. And it just had a lot of issues. And I'm sure that's why it was so cheap at the thrift store. But I don't want you guys to think that just because it's cheap, it's missing hardware and all of that. Don't discount that because this is a, the drawers slide beautifully. Um, and it's, it's well made. It's nice and heavy. It's got great details. And for what I want, it's perfect. So I'm going to lift it back up so you guys can see more of what I'm doing. And for those of you who always ask, this hydraulic lift table came from Harbor Freight. So if you don't have one, I recommend it highly. I don't get any kickback from it. I'm just telling you, it is a back saver. I think it goes up to like 35 inches and it'll hold up to a thousand pounds. So that's awesome. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... Um, I'm just going to paint this top, but I am going to use my favorite. Those of you who follow me, you know how much I love Dixie Bell's Coffee Bean. So the top's going to be Coffee Bean, but the reason I sanded it is because there were pock marks and there were deep gouges and things like that. My surf prep sander gets rid of all of that, so I don't have to worry about it. And then, um, now mine has been cleaned. It's, I also scuff sanded the entire body because it had a lot of little bumps and dings and things like that. Like I say, whoever had it really didn't love it that much. So we're going to start with uh, Dixie Bell's Sandbar. I'm going to go with a neutral on this. And then the top is going to be Dixie Bell's Coffee Bean. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And as you can tell, my favorite brushes are the Dixie Bell Mini Angled and uh, the Dixie Bell Mini. My Mr. Bottle is fabulous. If you like thrift shopping, I want to know where's your favorite place to thrift shop. Uh, a lot of the thrift stores that I used to go to, they've gotten where they really like their things a lot now. I mean, they're super expensive as opposed to what they used to be. And I think it's kind of annoying. But, I, I mean, I understand that they've got to make a buck. But I know a lot of them that I used to go to and get things pretty cheap. I mean, they're a lot more expensive now. So, also, I wanted to chit-chat with you guys and see if you have your ticket to the Bell & Bow Tour. Because I don't know if you know, but we are going to have a, we've got nine instructors. We've got six classes plus a demonstration for you at lunch. So that is super awesome. I know you're going to love that. We have uh, Sandy Harbor from Urban Rebel Designs out in New Mexico. She's going to be here in Atlanta to show you guys how to do a paint pour. So that's pretty awesome. Let's turn this around. All right, now I'm going to pull these out so I can get a good paint on them. And you can see I haven't cleaned the inside. There's a lot of sawdust and such. Um, when you guys do your pieces, I don't know if you guys, um, I don't know if you take the time, but you should always make sure and check all up underneath your drawers. You might find money taped there or something. But you also want to make sure that you get everything all cleaned up. And now the inside of these drawers looks pretty good. So I'm probably just going to um, do a little scuff sand with some Big Mama's Butter. And I love the Orange Grove. I don't know if you guys have tried Big Mama's Butter, but it is so totally amazing. It, it's just unbelievable. Got to have some water. So I don't know how you guys do it, but typically when I spray, I spray my drawers in place. Or if I'm doing a blend, I leave my drawers in place. But when I'm brushing, which... 
is not something I do very often. I like to take them out and that way they can sit and dry. You need to make sure that you number them or you set them somewhere so that nobody else can move them on you because that happens here. And that way you can make sure that they go back where they belong because sometimes if you don't get them back in the right spot, you'll regret it. You'll be sad. And I'm sorry for the way I look, guys, but I have been painting cabinets all day. You want to guess what color it is? French linen. It's a French linen blend. And you guys are going to get to see pictures of my newest kitchen. Um, you're going to get to see them this week. We are putting cabinet doors up in a couple of days. We just got to get it scheduled with the homeowner. And the center island is painted with sawmill gravy. And the exterior, the boundary cabinets as I call them, the boundary cabinets are painted with a French linen burlap blend. And I'm telling you, oh, I don't want that up there. Put it right on the top where I don't want it. All right, I gotta quit talking. Also make sure that these areas right here on the edges of your drawers, I call it the periphery, make sure those have some color too because a lot of times people skip that. I have noticed when I go and look at furniture, people skip that. And sometimes, especially in older pieces, the drawers will go in a little farther and you can see that somebody didn't take the time to paint that. And that always is kind of, you know, half halfway for me. I don't like it. Um, but now that's a personal thing for me. Also, how many of you guys, um, when you are painting a piece, do you paint the back? Do you always paint the back? Do you sometimes paint the back? I'll tell you, um, it really depends on the piece. If my piece is really old and has great markings, um, sometimes I'll cordon that off and then I'll paint the rest of it. And other times, I paint the entire back of the piece because, you know, it's great for it to be floating out in the floor a lot of times. I mean, it's really amazing when you put something out in the floor. All right, so... We're getting, we're getting it started. We've got our sandbar. And I don't know if you guys have ever tried Dixie Bell sandbar, but it is a beautiful grayish color. I mean, it is a gorgeous grayish color. Can you guys see inside here? Can you guys see how much sawdust there is? I am not even sure what they did with this. I mean, it's crazy. And it's well made. It actually has dividers between the drawers, and so many of them don't have that. I do like that. Now, if your drawers get stuck, you wish that they didn't have that. But, um, yeah, I really, really like the dividers. But this thing is really, really full of sawdust. It's not full of dust. Well, it does have dust. I'm a liar. Oh, there we go. Legs pantyhose. How exciting is that? Let's see what this one is. Power Rangers. Super exciting. I don't know if you guys have ever found anything interesting I found things that I wouldn't talk about in pieces that I bought. So uh, if you get a chance, you might want to look them, look them up before you uh, go live. Thankfully, this one didn't have anything. I should have checked behind him before I pulled them out live because every once in a while, you'll find things that you really don't want to have on a live video. What's the weirdest thing you've ever found? The weirdest thing I've ever found, um, I found receipts that were very, very old. I've found adult things in them. Um, a friend of mine found money taped to the back of a drawer one time. Um, but I have, sadly, I've only found things that were mildly interesting. Some receipts and, and such. They were pretty interesting. Uh, but, you know, sometimes nightstands hold little secrets. <laughs> so I always laugh about those. Okay, so now we've got our drawers out so that we can do this. All right, I'm sorry. I just keep walking in front of you guys. But the, I don't have my little extra piece on my cart tonight. So it only has so much room. Now, when you paint yours, do you use a brush? Do you spray? I am a sprayer almost exclusively. All of my base coats get sprayed. And I love it. Uh, I uh, actually just got a new toy that I want to tell you guys about. I got the PPS system for my Apollo sprayer. I am going to be demoing it later this week. And the PPA, PPS system is by 3M. 
I can't wait for you guys to see this thing. Instead of uh, using the cup that comes with my Apollo, now I have a disposable cup system. So all I have to do is clean the gun. Who doesn't like less cleaning? I mean, come on. Uh, my girlfriend, Corey, thank you very much, Corey. When we were in New Jersey, she kind of clued me into it. And as you guys know, John DeRock from Apollo Sprayers is going to be in Atlanta here helping. Um, he's going to be teaching us how to use the Apollo Sprayers. I chit-chatted with him about the PPS system, and he hooked me up with the part numbers and I ordered them and they came in today. So I gotta tell you, I'm super excited about my paint prep to uh, add to my Apollo sprayer because now less cleaning. Who doesn't like less cleaning? I gotta tell you, I'm super excited about it. I'm pumped. All right, so we've got this across here. And now, I don't know how you guys do it, but I like to put two light coats on everything. And I know some of you guys use um, boss or, or something, boss or slick stick on every piece. And I got to tell you, even as many kitchens as I did last year, I did not use boss. I think in four years, I've used boss on one kitchen and slick stick on one kitchen. How often do you guys use them? I'm not sure, so I'm gonna spin this around a little so you guys can see what I'm doing. We're just trying to get a base coat on here. Now, I wanna know your thoughts. If you had a top that was sanded down, would you uh, rather stain it or would you rather paint it? I would much rather use my coffee bean and you know, you can use it as a stain. It doesn't have to be used as a paint. And I've done a demo on it, so you can actually use it as a stain. When you water it down just a little bit, it does beautifully as a stain. But in this case, because I didn't sand down these edges, rather than go back, I don't, I don't really care. I just want a dark top. I want this to have a dark top with this lighter bottom. And then when I accent the drawers and then the pools that I'm going to use, I'm going to use library pools. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I think they will be really, really great. Now I'm going to spin you guys around. Hold tight. All right. I got to make sure we don't get it on our surf prep, you know? Look at me getting it all up there. Do you guys wipe it back with your hands or am I just an anomaly? I usually have baby wipes, but... I don't have any over here tonight. Because I got to tell you, I was last minute getting here. Those of you who know me know that is not surprising. But I hung out painting in my kitchen until the last possible minute. And then I had to run and run, run, run and get over here. Thankfully, I was only about 15 or 20 minutes from the shop. So I got over here on time. And then it wouldn't let me go live. So sorry about that. I know I was about two or three minutes late, but it said, no, 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 not enough signal. So what is your favorite Dixie Bell Neutral? This has got to be one of mine. Sandbar is one of my favorites. I will say though, that I am quite impressed with the new, um, what did I just say? Sawmill gravy. I'm kind of digging on sawmill gravy. Have you have painted something with sawmill gravy recently, I want to see it because I'm really digging on that and I've got some things I've got to do for a customer and I'm thinking sawmill gravy needs to play a part in it. And those of you who follow me know that I have a secretary started that we are going to work on in um, live so that you guys can see because we're going to do the inside a different color than the outside. And I was taking suggestions the other day. I think it was in a different group, but I was taking suggestions. All right, so we got our base coat on. Now I'm gonna tell you, when I do my base coats, a lot of people get kind of worried um, when they do their base coat because sometimes you can see through it and things like that, um, especially light over dark, dark over light. Uh, don't stress about it. I gotta tell you, 
nobody's base coat looks fabulous, except, you know, maybe CeCe's and Brandy's. But nobody's base coat looks beautiful. So I have a lot of people who get ready, they're ready to jump ship when their base coat doesn't look good. But I gotta tell you, if you watch any of us paint live, you can see that your base coat doesn't look fabulous with that first coat. I mean, when you're going light over dark, and if you're doing kitchen cabinets for a customer and they're watching you, um, they kind of panic when they see that first coat of paint. Um, because I brush the boxes and then I spray everything else. And every once in a while, you'll see the little bit of panic on their face. They don't really say anything. But you can see they're like, oh my gee, this girl has no idea what she's doing. And I tell them the same thing. Trust the process. This is going to be great. It's going to be beautiful. All right, so now we've got this one on here, and it looks just like I said. It looks kind of like adolescence, and that's what I equate it to. It's kind of like, oh, not really. Um, so we're going to get our other brush out, and it is a Dixie Belle Well-Loved Mini. We're going to dampen it down, and we're going to do our coffee bean on the top. Now, I know a lot of you guys like the light bottom, dark top, and you stress over oil-based stains. I mean, there's a million things to stress over. Oil-based stain and stuff is not really one of them you need to worry about. Another alternative is to paint it with coffee bean, and if you want it to have a wood grain look, drag a little bit of chocolate or a little bit of pine cone over it with a, ch with a chip brush, and it makes a beautiful, I mean, a fabulous looking wood grain. Okay, so if you know me, you know I use coffee bean all the time, and I think it is just a beautiful color. I use it for accenting. I use it for staining. I, I use it all of the time. You can make it as dark or as light as you want, but since this one is sanded, it's going to be a little bit lighter um, on the top than it is on the edges, and I know some of you people with OCD, that's kind of stressful. It's fabulous to me, okay? I like for there to be a, a different tone. I love it. If you don't want it lighter, then don't keep your brushes damp and just wipe it and just make your, your strokes a little heavier, add a little bit more product. But I love the way it looks, especially when I've got a top that's been sanded down. Oh my gee, I have to tell you. I'm all about some coffee bean. Um, it looks as pretty as any stain you'll buy. And it just, it just gives a beautiful look. I'm going to show you guys. We're going to do this one right quick. And then you'll get to look at it. And we'll see where we are. And we'll catch up with it. Um, my pools are ordered. So we'll probably have to catch up with it next week. Because I don't think my pools will come in and I've got a kitchen to finish. Also, when you're painting near things, do you guys ever make sure that you don't flip your bristles? I have to remind people in their in classes, a lot of times they'll let their bristles flip. And those of you who paint a lot, you know what I'm saying? You gotta make sure you're not flipping your bristles because if you're painting something large, you can end up flipping your bristles um, and spreading your paint all across the room. And while you may like this color paint, I really don't want everything else in the room to be coffee bean. You know what I'm saying? So you have to make sure. And the genius that I am, I left my coffee bean open the other day, so it's a little thicker than I'd like for it to be. But you know, if you do that, if you're a genius like I am and you do that, the best thing to do, just use a damp brush. Just use, and I did say damp, just use a damp brush and it will be beautiful. Every once in a while, I'll open something that I haven't had open in a while and it'll be kind of thick. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, it's no good anymore. Seriously, people, y'all are not as frugal as I am. I mean, I, you can throw some water in that and stir it up and it does beautifully. So don't stress about it. And I'm in the South, so I usually don't have to worry about anything freezing, but I've even tried to bring back, help bring back some that was left where it shouldn't be, and it was a little cold, and it 
did not fare well, but a little bit of warm water and we got it right back to where it was usable. All right, so I'm gonna show you, we're gonna go around. You have to make sure if you're like me, you have to go back and clean up those little edges because otherwise you know what'll happen. You'll end up letting that stuff just sit there and it'll be yucky. And then it's sanding again. I know a lot of you guys don't like to sand, which if you have a surf prep sander, you probably love to sand like I do. But if you don't like to sand, I totally get that. But every once in a while you come across a piece that you got to do it to. I mean, you got to sand it to get it the way that you want it to look. So if you don't like to sand, there's usually other alternatives, but like the way this piece looked, honey, it just had so many issues. The whole finish was cracked. So it took a, it took a lot of sanding. And it, from the look of the way it's soaking this up, we may have to have more than one coat of, maybe a coat and a half, like my friend Heather talks about. Instead of two coats, she said, sometimes you just need a coat and a half. So, maybe that's what this one will need. All right, so I'm gonna show you, I can see back here already that I'm gonna need a little bit more. And all of a sudden my comments are gone, so I'm sorry, but I will answer all of your questions afterwards because I don't know what happened. It still says I'm live, so I hope I am. But I can't see any comments and no numbers at the top. So, I don't even know if I'm still live. All right. So, I'm going to spin this over here and drop it down a little so you can see it. Come on. All right. So you guys can see, this is still drying, but see how nice and dark that is? It's a nice even tone. The front needs a little bit of work, but that's a whole nother discussion. All right, so now you can see what it looks like, and you can see, you can kind of get an idea of where we're going with it. You can see that we're getting lint on it from somewhere. That's why I have to keep my hair back because I shed worse than any dog you've ever had that sheds. Um, all right, so you can see this is where we're kind of going with it. And um, the library pools are a dark color. They're really pretty. Um, they're not really oil rubbed bronze. They're kind of a little bit lighter than that. But I think they're like English something. So you can see kind of what it looks like. You can see where we're going with it. As soon as my pulls come in, I will get back on here and I'll show you kind of what we're gonna do. But we're going, I'm probably gonna do a flat top coat on this. I like kind of more of a matte finish than, um, than a shiny finish. I may do gator hide on the top because most horizontal surfaces, I use our water repellent top coat, which is gator hide. So I'll probably do gator hide on the top but on the rest of it, I'll probably do flat because I really want it to kind of have an old feel to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these drawers and we're going to put them back in. And I'm probably going to use a little bit of either brown wax or grunge gray wax or maybe a combination. Um, did you guys know that you can mix them together and make your own color? I really like grunge gray with the brown. And sometimes I'll put black with the grunge gray on something like this just to give it a little bit of age. And I don't know if you noticed on these drawers, but they have great architectural details. See, they have a lot of depth to them. And when you got a lot of depth like that, you really want to make sure that it shows up. And in fact, these may get some Dixie dirt, some earth dirt. So if you think they need earth dirt, let me know, because that might be great with our dark top and this, and we'll do some earth dirt in here and then put our library pools on there, because I want to give the illusion that each one of these is an individual drawer. I think maybe that's what we're going to do. I don't know yet. Um, that is the plan right now. But if you follow me, you know plans change quite often. So this is where we are tonight. Um, if you haven't gotten your ticket for the Bells and Bow Tour, please do. If you haven't joined the Bells and Bow Tour group, please take a minute and do that. Because even if you're not coming, we got lots of fun going on in there. And I'm Pam with 44 Marketplace. Thanks for watching. See you later.